Welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I'm your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding of worship where you are. Today's question comes to us from Oscar Ramos Gallardo, who dropped a line on the Liturgy Man blog right here. And he, uh, by the way, happened to be ordained with me in 1997 by Woody White. He wonders about the history of the use of anointing with oil in United Methodism and our predecessor denominations. And he also wonders about the appropriateness of that practice, particularly in ministry at the time of death. Here's how Oscar describes how he's been involved in that kind of work uh, in his own ministry. He uses the anointing with oil at this time um, as a spiritual and emotional source of solace and or consolation for the sick and for the family. He says he uses the oil to anoint the person. And then he invites the people who are gathered around this person who is close to death um, to pray for healing and for God's will. And he's just wondering what would United Methodism reflect on that? Well, um, it's a great question. And it's, uh, I think it represents a trend in a direction that we are heading that's, I would argue, is actually a pretty good thing. Prior to the 1992 Book of Worship, Methodism had been an oil-less religious ritual movement. You will not find a drop of oil referenced in any of our ritual documents prior to the 1992 Book of Worship. It's not in the 1965 Book of Worship. It's not in the 1945 Book of Worship. It's not in any previous hymnal. It's not in the 1784 Sunday service. And it's not even in the Book of Common Prayer of 1662, upon which John Wesley based the 1784 Sunday service. We have been an oilless movement as Methodists long before we were even a separate church in our roots in, in the Church of England, which had uh, removed oil from its practice um, some centuries earlier. I will say I am grateful to have it back. And I'm grateful that we have brought it back, even if we have brought it back in some very tentative ways. We have brought it back in, in baptism. Now, if you're just looking at the hymnal, you'll never see this. But if you're looking in the book of worship, you'll find that at the point at which uh, the pastor has laid hands on the person who has just been baptized, and the congregation would be extending hands or laying hands as well, there's this list of additional things that can be done. One of those additional things that can be done, the very first one listed, is the pastor may trace on the forehead of each newly baptized person uh, the sign of the cross in silence or with some words. But then it goes on to add the option of oil right here. Olive oil may be used in this action following the biblical custom of anointing prophets, priests, and kings. Jesus' titles, Christ and Messiah, both mean anointed one. And the New Testament repeatedly calls Christ our high priest and king. Christians in baptism become members of the body of Christ, which is a royal priesthood. Anointing at baptism is a reminder that all Christians are anointed into this royal priesthood. We place anointing with oil as an option at baptism. But I will note, we still place it there tentatively. It's, it's a start. It's a move to help re-oil our baptisms and really to recapture um, the practice of a much more abundant use of oil that we find all over the early church and that continues to this day in both the Roman Catholic Church and in the various Orthodox churches. The other place where we find anointing with oil in our current ritual, of course, is in the services of healing. But once again, it's considered an option. Though we don't make uh, a, any sort of requirement at all in that ritual, the prayer of thanksgiving of oil or a hymn of healing, those are put in brackets, as you can see here, you can see the page. 
um, we do make it, um, so we still make it optional by saying, if there is anointing with oil and a description of how that work takes place, the leader touches the thumb to the oil and makes a sign of cross on the person's forehead, just as at baptism. Here's where I would argue that what Oscar is already doing uh, is an anticipation of a direction we might be heading that makes a lot of good sense. Because what are we doing in the ministry at the time of death? Certainly, we are engaging in a ministry of healing and restoration. Not healing that necessarily means cure, but healing that speaks to the wholeness that we desire and the greater wholeness we desire for this person as they move from this age in anticipation of the age to come. But we also, in death, remember that the one who has died in Christ is indeed baptized. And so the anointing on the forehead as a person is nearing death is a wonderful reminder that we enter into death as those who have died and been raised with Christ in baptism. So what do I think about uh, this practice? I think it's a wonderful thing. I'm grateful that Oscar is working with this. It's something that I would invite others to consider doing. It doesn't have precedent in terms of, of our ritual. It's not described in our ritual anywhere, but it reflects this kind of movement that's happening around oil as we have come to begin to reclaim it, at least, in the 1992 Book of Worship. And perhaps in our next ritual set of ritual resources, we might reclaim it even further. So thank you, Brother Oscar. And remember, you can always contact me, worship at liturgyfolks.com, through our UMC Worship Facebook group, or like Oscar did, drop a line on this page. And perhaps your question or comment will become the basis for a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. May the peace of Christ be always with you.